Vladimir Putin has ordered troops into eastern Ukraine, and according to a senior government official familiar with the latest intelligence, the expectation is they could move in as soon as tonight, what would be the early morning hours there. What's more, and it is underscored by the enormous array of Russian forces you see on the map, nearly a dozen American and Western officials now tell CNN that we've, what we've seen so far today appears to just be the opening salvo of a larger possible military action. Just moments ago, we saw a video being played on the Russian outlet RTVI. As you can see, it shows trucks pulling field artillery down a road, apparently through the city of Donetsk. Now, to be clear, we don't know who this belongs to. It follows Vladimir Putin this afternoon signing a decree recognizing two Moscow-backed chunks of eastern Ukraine as independent republics, republics and significantly ordering troops into the territories, an invasion or an occupation, despite the propaganda that Putin uses, calling it peacekeeping. Even more ominous, what he had to say in a lengthy and combative speech, his remarks began with a twisted history lesson distorted to Russia's point of view. They ended with a threat to all of Ukraine. In fact, a sort of denial that Ukraine even exists. I would like to reiterate that Ukraine is just not a, our neighboring country. It's an integral part of our own history, culture, and spiritual space. Ukraine, from the beginning and in its totality, has been created by Russia. Those who have taken the power and are holding uh, the power in Ukraine. We demand from you to stop any of the military actions. Otherwise, the responsibility will be on the uh, governing government uh, in Ukraine. Quite a contrast from reports earlier in the day of preparations for a Thursday meeting between Russia's foreign minister and Secretary of State Blinken in preparation for a possible Biden-Putin summit. A contrast also from this just yesterday from Russia's ambassador to Washington. We are not uh, trying to uh, take any territory of uh, foreign countries. I would like to confirm that Donbass and Lugansk is a part of Ukraine. Yeah, so much for yesterday. Tonight at the White House and in NATO capitals across Europe, the focus is now twofold on imposing sanctions and sadly, bracing for the impact of what could now just be hours away, whatever that might be. As only CNN can, we have reports from everywhere that matters. CNN's Clarissa Ward is in Kyiv, Caitlin Collins at the White House, CNN contributor Jill Doherty in Moscow, and Alex Marquardt in a potentially strategic city in eastern Ukraine. I want to start with Clarissa Ward in the Ukrainian capital, where President Zelensky has just made an early morning address to the country. Clarissa, what did Zelensky say? That's right, John. So he eventually spoke at about two in the morning, just under an hour ago. And essentially, he accused Russia of violating Ukraine's territorial integrity and its sovereignty, though he did not use the invasion word. He also said uh, that he demands, quote, clear support from the West in terms of those sanctions. That's something we have also seen echoed by his foreign minister, who has taken to Twitter uh, this evening, basically saying that he is in lockstep and that Ukraine is in lockstep with its allies and that he expects a sort of raft of blistering sanctions to be announced tomorrow. Not clear what those would look like yet. Zelensky also said, we do not fear anything and we will not cede anything. But what we're seeing on the ground already, John, you know, according to social media posts, according to Reuters who are there, are some form of military convoys moving through Donetsk. And as you stated, and it's a really important clarification to make, we cannot be sure if this convoy is Russian military or pro-Russian separatists. But what we do know is that this friendship and security agreement that President Putin signed earlier between Russia and the republics of Donetsk and Lugansk, as they are now calling themselves independent republics, that this basically allows for peacekeeping forces to be deployed as soon as now to help uh, with security, to help defend borders, and really, this raises troubling concerns about 
how the international community responds to this. Does this constitute an invasion? Is it simply uh, an area that was already under de facto Moscow control? A and so I think for a lot of people in Ukraine tonight, a lot of anxiety, not just because of Russian peacekeepers potentially arriving as we speak in those breakaway republics, but also because of the tone of President Putin's speech, which you just hit on, essentially negating the very existence of Ukraine as some kind of a sovereign country, calling the leadership here uh, a, a puppet regime of a colony, and running through a raft of historical grievances against NATO, which really appeared to many listeners, I think, for the first time to potentially pave the groundwork for something much more expansive than what we're seeing tonight. Remains to be seen, of course, whether that will go ahead or whether this is just something that President Putin will now try to use as leverage in further diplomatic negotiations, to the extent that those diplomatic negotiations are still on the table, John. We simply don't know what happens now to that meeting between Blinken and Lavrov, and certainly the future of any summit between Putin and Biden seems far less likely in this moment. Caitlin Collins, to you at the White House, with a very real possibility that Russian troops may be already in parts of Ukraine like this. What is the Biden administration's response tonight? Well, they say they're going to monitor this overnight to see what happens in these hours. Of course, it's about 3 a.m. there in Ukraine now, but they are not ready to call this an invasion yet. And they have made that quite clear in some conversations that officials have had with reporters tonight and on CNN as well. Uh, given what they're seeing on the ground, they say they still want to see what Putin is going to do with these forces now that he has signed this, which they have said, of course, would be defying international law. They've made that quite clear how they view what Putin did today, but the way that they are responding is still not fully clear yet. We do know President Biden signed this executive order earlier. That puts these limited economic sanctions on these areas, these breakaway regions of Ukraine. It is not sanctions on Russia yet. They are not sanctions on Putin yet. The ones that we have been hearing officials talk about for weeks, those are not being unleashed yet because it appears that they are saving that in the light of a full-scale invasion. And so I think that remains to be seen exactly how the White House is going to respond. Though they have teased some sanctions coming tomorrow, potentially, I think it really determines, or it depends on what happens overnight before we actually see what that response is. But right now, they are not calling this an invasion here at the White House. That is interesting. Uh, Alex, to you in eastern Ukraine, what are you hearing from officials about what Putin's moves there could look like? Well, John, as you said, uh, everyone believes now this is the opening salvo for whatever Putin has planned. We just don't know what he's thinking for the coming hours and days. We spoke with a Western diplomat uh, who said that we are in a new era and a dangerous one because of that lack of uh, predictability. Now, what is especially dangerous are these so-called peacekeepers uh, now in the Donbass. This is an area where over the course of the past few days, Russia and Russian-backed forces have accused Ukraine uh, of carrying out attacks against them. So now that we will likely have official Russian troops there, what happens if they engage with Ukraine or, or accuse Ukraine of attacking them? Uh, Russia could then have an excuse to further expand their campaign. So do they want to stay in these two breakaway enclaves for now? Do they plan to expand uh, their operation? They're there's a whole menu of options given their positioning all around Ukraine. Uh, they could take that land bridge to connect Crimea with eastern Ukraine, uh, with, uh, with Russia. They could invade from the north, from Belarus, and try to move on Kyiv. Uh, they could come up from the south, uh, from Crimea, where they've got troops, helicopters, and, and ships. Um, and the Biden administration has repeatedly said that they could uh, start a, a real full-scale invasion uh, by bombing with, with missiles and with their fighter jets. So um, a lot remains to be seen, John, in the coming hours and days. I did speak with a European defense official uh, who, who told me that if he goes for war, he has to do it fast and then start preparing for peace negotiations. So perilous hours uh, tonight, to be sure. Jill, so Putin has signed these decrees regarding eastern Ukraine. What exactly do they say? What do they authorize? Well, they recognize, number one, and that is a violation of the uh, territorial integrity and the sovereignty of Ukraine, recognizes these two breakaway regions, Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. And then also they have a um, friendship, cooperation, and uh, mutual assistance part of that. 
And it, within that part, the president, President Putin, authorizes the Russian military to carry out, to ensure peacekeeping functions, is the way it's put. So, again, tacitly, while those, you know, officially, according to the Russians, in quotes, they are peacekeepers, but obviously they can be used the, any, the, as anything they want. But that's kind of, you know, the legal part of it. Um, what he intends to do with that, or the fig leaf of it, is another question. And the, the real fear, I think, John, is that, as we've been saying, this could open the door mm -hmm. to all sorts of things that could happen. But it, but it really does tear apart, I think, the, the, also, it tears apart the Minsk Accords, which were the one thing that, you know, people were hoping eventually could solve that conflict in Donbass. It hasn't worked for seven or eight, seven years. And uh, right now, obviously, it's in shreds.